It's literally four years old. So I was a big kid. <laughs> TMI. No need to know to know. <laughs> Anyways, um, all right, let's start now. All right, first question. Who's seen a crappy movie? Huh? Yeah? And you all regret it, right? Okay, well, let me inform you of what are the key elements of a crappy movie and how you can tell from a movie. So, just let you know, this is a creepy review, and um, it's by me. And just let you know that the advice might not apply to all of you because we're not all the same. If you haven't figured that out. Next. Okay, so what makes up a trailer's, you know, what you want to look in a trailer is the genre and plot, of course. That's the main thing, that's one thing that you want to recognize. The casting is always fundamental because it could be a good movie, you know, it could have a good, it could have a good meaning or something like that, you know, just, but you could have the crappiest actor ever. Or it could be a terrible movie, and it was really all brought up by a good actor. And then, of course, adaptations doesn't always work out, as we all know. There's a lot of, I'm going to get into that. But then there's sequels, prequels, and remakes. As you can also know, that they don't always work out either. <laughs> Just because we all talk about Spider-Man. Um, and then there's the worlds. Whatever. This is something that I've been thinking about because a lot of what I've noticed was that uh, whenever there's a crappy movie, it has that narrator like, "Are you ready?" You know that voice? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, and he always starts off with like, "He's the world's greatest," whatever, and or it's like, "It's the most world's combined," whatever. Anyways, that's just it. Kind of reminds me of you know the theme of Jaws. Da -da. Da, 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 da. It's just a warning sign for a shit. So, <laughs> all right, next. All right, so genres, as we all know. What you want to look for is the originality. If it's already been done, and in what span of time has it already been done? You know, just things like that. Um, if it's on current event topics, you know, if it's, it's the same thing, romantic comedies, starring Jennifer Aniston, you can never rely on those. You know, um, <laughs> Just things like that. And a good example is Tropic Thunder, a really good movie that I think, in my opinion. It's about a couple of actors that go off to actual Vietnam to pretend to be in a war movie when they actually find themselves in a drug lord's zone and they end up fighting for real. So it starts Ben Stiller, um, Jack Black, and Robert Downey Jr., who almost got an award for this if it weren't for Heath Ledger as the Joker in, you know, uh, the. Dark Knight. You know, he was very, very close. And he does a good job. He pretends to be an Australian actor pretending to be a black 1960s <laughs> Vietnam soldier. And he does a spot on job. I highly recommend it. And then there's other movies where, you know, they're right over me. Has anybody seen that? No? Nobody? Okay, well, this movie is pretty good. It talks about the aftermath of 9-11 and you know and it talks about a father who lost his mind because her his whole entire family died on that plane crash and his friend finally found him about 11 years later on the streets of New York riding on a bike and just he just he wasn't in his mind so and it's about him you know reconnecting and trying to get over that past and I, amazingly it's a good uh, movie and Adam Sandler did really good job in, you know, considering the crap that he's made before. <laughs> he does a really good job being depressed, so. And then we got movies like this. Why did I talk about this? Because it came out prior to the movie No Strings Attached, which was with Natalie Portman and Ashley Kutcher, which was the same thing, sleeping around with a guy with no relationship at all. As you can probably tell, it got like an 80, it got like a 20 ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. It was Horrible. And I never seen it, but I can just tell. So, <laughs> so like things like that, you just kind of like just just be staying away from it. And like I'm just gonna realize, like I'm just gonna let you guys know. You know, it's fun to watch these movies if you're with a group or something. But if you really want to like watch a movie, like a new movie that you really want to get blown away with, try to look for these like little details because you're just gonna get disappointed in the end. Next. And then there's the cast, of course. Now, it always comes down to the cast, you know, after 
genre and plot because, like I said, anybody can make it better or worse. Katherine Heigl, she's been trying her whole life and it's never going to work out. So, <laughs> oh. yes. she, she got a good, you know, she got a good break with Knocked Up, of course, because mostly Seth Rogen was, you know, helping out with that, you know. It was just a good pair and I think she did an okay job, but so far, she should just quit or write something, you know. Just <laughs> and then there's always my favorite and my personal hero, Robert Downey Jr. Some movies weren't always as recognized as it was, you know, but he did a good job. He does a good acting job. And the only thing that I can't forgive him was for the Shaggy Dog. He did, like, the Disney movie. I'm, no. I mean, he made it up with Iron Man, but no. And then, of course, you don't want to have to watch a movie with too many great actors or A-listers on <coughs> Valentine's Day because it could really take away from the plot and story. And, yeah, the studio was just thinking about like putting all these actors together, you know, what's going to Really? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to still go on, I don't care. <laughs> so, yeah, be careful. Too many actors can kill a movie. Next, please. And then there's adaptations. This is really, really hard to come with because it could be an okay movie, but there's a fan, you know, a fan base that can just be so angry at this that they, they never want to watch the director's movies ever again. And the one movie that was hilarious because I was reading a review on it and it's the worst movie ever for kids. And they said it was so bad that they actually pulled it out of circulation from Blockbuster, Hollywood videos, and everything else like that. And they actually protested against this nationwide. So the only thing you can look for it is in like eBay. And so, and it's called the Garbage Kid, Pale Kids. And if you guys don't know, it's from 1986, and it's based on a card collecting, you know, bubblegum card collecting game, where you know people like they get the cards and they're supposed to resemble like Cabbage Patch Kids. <laughs> but more disgruntled and distorted and just ugly faced and you know and they have like these little cute names for every little view like there was this one uh, Windy Willy and he was farting while he was playing the tuba or something like that just really stupid things anyway so this was they tried to make a movie you know be all fun with it it didn't work out so <laughs> and then there's the most hazards you know great 1960s show Remade with this crap. Giant Ox will try very hard. He should have just been hurt like a jackass a lot. And then there's Battleship. Who really wants to watch a board game on the red screen? And you know someone's gonna come up with a cheesy name. You suck my Battleship. No. 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 Next. And then there's sequels, of course. Sequels, prequels, and remakes. Does anybody really want to watch a sequel or a prequel to a crappy movie already? It's almost like the little kid, like the 12-year-old, you know, with hopes and dreams of like, you know what, I'm going to start this right again. I'm going to do this all again. It's going to be better, bigger. And no, it wasn't. And so one of this was Spider-Man 3, of course. Now, the first two were great, of course, brought a lot of money. But I have this thing about, I call it kind of like the deadly trio. Because whenever there's like a you know a, pre, um, a franchise which has two movies and then they're thinking about making the third one, it never works out well, especially with like Marvel movies or something like that, you know, comic book movies or anything like that. Except for you know movies that are based on novels because the story's already there. And so it just it was not working well. The story was you know like we all know the story of course, but. It just sank. I don't know, because the second one, it pretty much wrapped it up, you know, he got back with his lover, you know, there was more conflict with it, just, I don't need to explain the rest. Anyways, the third one sucked, that's all you know. <laughs> and then there's a remake of If Davey Earth Stood Still, which, I had never seen the first one, but <coughs> I heard it was okay for the time. Anyways, Keanu Reeves played an alien, like he always does. And 
I watched it with my mom. When I watch crappy movies with my mom, it's usually just, you know, service for her, because, you know, she wants to watch a movie, and whenever I say no, she gets angry. So I, I do times like this where I let her pick the movie and watch it with her. And really, I'm just dying inside. So this was a terrible movie. It just, it shouldn't have been remade again, ever. But some, like the prequel of X-Men First Class, it was great. It was, good. it was a good movie. Very entertaining. And I think because for X-Men First Class, it was based back in the 60s, and it took that time frame, because the whole story was that, you know, mutants were barely coming out, you know, being, I mean, mutants were being discovered, nobody really knew about it, they were more secreted, and, you know, it just started pretty much from the beginning, like in the comics. And it started with a good cast, there was not much overshadowing on who was trying to get more <coughs> So it was a really good movie. Next. And then there's the world's blah, blah, blah. Anyways, so this guy, he does the narrations that I was talking to earlier really about. The, are you ready? Like, the, the world's greatest spy, you know, comes alive. Or whatever, you know, this guy kind of gives me the warning signs of a crappy movie all the time. And, like I said, it just reminds me of the Joss theme all the time. And from a lot of the movies up till like, 2000, that they did fine with this narration on their movie trailers and then the actual movie itself. But lately, when they use the voice, it's always something stupid. Like, they did the one for, like, Eddie Murphy when he was doing Big Mama's House. Oh, wait, no, not. I love you so much. But, um, you know, when they were doing Big Mama's House, too, and they were doing the clumps and all that other stuff like that, and it's just, uh, I don't know. I don't know why they bother. And personally, like, this guy's got a great voice, of course, but I feel like he does it for anything now. And just, if you can give him $5, he'll do anything. <laughs> and I did. I watched a YouTube video, and he can, like, for about $20 or so, he can make you a custom made uh, voicemail with his voice saying, you know, you're not in or something like that, and just this epic voicemail pretty much. And so, yeah, it kind of sold out, but next. So I'm going to do a spoiler real quick. I watched this movie with my mom again. It was terrible. It was the same sequence, you know, like the whole home footage, but there was no guy behind it, no one was talking to him. So it was just this crappy, like, film, and in the end, what you would thought was like a ghost story, you know, because she's trapped in a house and you think that someone killed her, there's a murderer in the house or anything. Ended up her being a psychopath because her parents or her dad raped her or, you know, molested her or abused her in the end. And it ended up her walking out of the house casually because she went back to being crazy, you know, so. Don't watch this. This, this is not... Just go watch Lorax or something. I really, I really don't want to see it. Never hear this. Okay, to the wrap it up. All right. Go. Okay, so, in the end, which movie will you choose now that you know what the hell to look for? Next. And there you go. That's it. Woo!